welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you so much for watching my videos and leaving your comments. I really appreciate it. And also I just want to put it out there that YouTube deleted two comments already. It was not me who deleted them, but it was YouTube. And I absolutely have no idea why they did it, but I just want to tell you if you're the one who left the comment, thank you. And for the case suggestions, I will definitely consider them in my next videos. This story happened a really long time ago. This is a classic case. This is the story that did not only inspire others, especially women, to speak up, but also a story that really exposed the corruption within the organization who's supposed to protect and defend its people, which is the police department. This is the story of Christine Collins and her son, Walter Collins. Christine was born on the 14th of December, 1888, and she has lived her whole life in California, United States. At the age of 30, she gave birth to a lovely baby boy and named him Walter Collins. Christine raised Walter as a single mother. Her husband, Walter's father, at the time was incarcerated for robbery. She worked really hard as a telephone operator and she was able to get promoted as a supervisor or a team leader. During her day off, she would spend the whole time with Walter. They would go out, watch movie and cinemas or eat and just really enjoy the time together. She would bring Walter to places where he will really enjoy and just have a great time as a kid. Saturday, 10th of March, 1928. It was Christine's day off and she promised to bring Walter to a cinema and they would watch movie together. But she received a call from her boss asking her to go to the office. They were really short of people at that day and they could really use Christine's help in running things inside the office. Christine had no choice but to leave Walter all by himself. He then gave Walter a penny so he can still go to the cinema and watch the movie since he had been really looking forward to seeing the movie that day. Walter was nine years old at that time so it was really not a big deal for Christine to leave Walter alone. Later that day, Christine went home and found Walter was not there. She immediately looked for him and when she couldn't find him inside her house, she started asking people outside, neighbors, random passerby, and almost everybody that she could find. She asked them if they have seen Walter, but nobody seemed to have seen him, or at least nobody seemed to remember. Christine called the police to report Walter missing, but the policeman who she spoke to over the phone said it has to be at least 24 hours before they can file a missing report for someone or anyone. The next morning, Walter was still not home, so she decided to call the police again. This time, they took the report and filed a missing person report on Walter. They also immediately sent police men to Christine's home. They started investigating and interviewing the people in the neighborhood. They were able to establish that Walter was last seen at around 5 p.m. that afternoon he went missing. The police got so many leads. There were people calling and reporting that they've seen Walter in San Francisco and even in Oakland, Oregon. The police had to follow up hundreds of leads, all led them nowhere. They started getting so much pressure from the media and the people. Five months since Walter's disappearance, Captain J.J. Jones of the LAPD, the person or the police who's handling the case, received a call. A boy was found left in a diner in Illinois claiming to be Walter Collins. Letters and photos were exchanged between the LAPD and the Illinois Police Department for verification. And then they informed Christine that they found Walter and Christine paid for the boy to be brought back to California. When Christine finally saw the boy at the train station, she immediately told Captain J.J. Jones that the boy was not her missing son, Walter. 
but she was told that they were able to verify everything and the boy was really Walter. She tried to convince Captain J.J. Jones, however, she was told that she should try the boy out. And she was probably not thinking clearly as she had been under a lot of stress the past few months. Captain J.J. Jones then told Christine and the boy to pose for a photo. Christine took the boy home with her. Days passed and it was becoming clear to her that the boy was not Walter. One night, she was helping the boy take a bath and she noticed that the boy had been circumcised. Walter was not. She then took the measurement of the boy's height and found out that he was three inches shorter than Walter's last height measurement. Christine was also able to get written and signed testimonies from Walter's dentist and teachers confirming that the boy was really not Walter. She tried to bring this all to the attention of Captain J.J. Jones. However, instead of getting help, she was pushed back and denied help multiple times. She was even told that she probably was losing her mind. Desperate and disappointed, Christine decided to talk to the media. She told the media all about the proof that she was able to gather that the police have brought the wrong boy home. She also told the media that the police should be out there looking for her son and that the more they deny and delay this, the lesser the chances they have in bringing Walter home safe with her. Furious and angry, Captain J.J. Jones ordered his men to get Christine from her home and admit her in the psychiatric ward in the L.A. County Hospital under the Code 12. Christine suffered a lot of abuse. She suffered verbal, physical, and mental abuse while admitted to the hospital. She was forced to take medicines. She also learned that there were other women who were mentally healthy and stable but were admitted to the same psychiatric ward only because they did not please the police and that they were all admitted under the same code as she was, which was code 12. While Christine was still inside the hospital, the boy admitted to Captain J.J. Jones that he was not Walter Collins. He said his name was Arthur Hutchins, a runaway boy from Iowa. He said that he pretended to be Walter so he could go to California and Hollywood and meet his favorite actor. Of course, Captain J.J. Jones ordered Christine's immediate release. Clearly, she was not losing her mind. When Christine got out, she filed a lawsuit against the LAPD and won the case. Captain J.J. Jones lost his job and so was the chief of police department at that time. He was also ordered to pay Christine for damages, which he never paid. All the women that were admitted to the hospital with the same code as Christine, which was code 12, the women who were mentally healthy and stable, but they were admitted because they did not please the police, were all freed and released. In that year, 1928, a string of child abductions and murders were reported in Wineville, California. A 22-year-old man named Gordon Northcott was apprehended in Canada and was brought back in the United States and was charged with the abductions and murders of these children. It was said that Gordon Northcott abducted and killed at least three young boys, possibly as many as 20 young children. I will dig more into Gordon Northcott's story in another video. I don't really want this video to get too long that you don't want to watch it. The police were able to find bones in the ranch where Gordon Northcott lived and they've confirmed that they were bones of young children. They were able to gather hard evidence that at least three young boys were killed by Gordon Northcott. He was also implicated in Walter's disappearance. Though there was nobody found, the police were convinced that 
Walter was abducted and killed by Gordon as well. Gordon Northcott was found guilty and was sentenced to death by hanging. He was executed in San Quentin in 1930. Before his execution, Gordon Northcott admitted to abducting and killing children, but he never admitted to abducting and killing Walter. Christine also was pretty sure that Walter was still alive. Christine was actually the first woman who was ever allowed to visit someone in death row the night before his execution. Gordon Northcott sent her a telegram saying that he's ready to tell Christine what really happened with Walter. But when Christine got there, he changed his mind and he even denied knowing Walter or even seeing him. Christine continued to believe that Walter was still alive. She continued to search for him until her death on the 8th of December, 1964, at the age of 76, 36 years after her beloved son Walter went missing. What really made this case puzzling is because there was nobody ever found of Walter. And it's almost as if the police just pinned Walter's disappearance on the string of murders and abductions that were happening in Wineville at that time. A lot of people still believe that it's possible that Walter was abducted or taken away by someone else. This case is considered close though as Gordon Northcott was still the person who the police believed to have abducted and killed Walter. Well, what do you guys think about this case? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories with me. For case suggestions, feel free to leave a comment or message me on our Facebook page. Thank you so much everybody for tuning in another video. I appreciate your time. You guys take care. See you on my next video. Bye!